9.4, Strengths of Ionic and Covalent Bonds. Now we've talked about this a little bit before, especially when we were talking about bonding back in chapter four, but energy must be added to break chemical bonds. So breaking chemical bonds is an endothermic process. Forming chemical bonds actually releases energy because the atoms are typically more stable in a lower state of energy after forming a bond. So that excess energy is released. So forming chemical bonds releases energy. It is an exothermic process. For example, if we were to take hydrogen gas and we were to break it apart into two individual hydrogen atoms, this is an endothermic process. It requires the input of 436 kilojoules. Whereas the reverse process, two hydrogen atoms coming together to form a H2, an H2 molecule, this is an exothermic process that gives off 436 kilojoules of energy. So we can use these bond energies as, uh, we can use these bond energies to calculate standard enthalpy change. So the bond energy for a diatomic molecule is defined as the standard enthalpy change for the endothermic reaction, xy forms x plus y. So this is where this definition comes from. Here's another example of this. So if we took a molecule of methane and we broke it into carbon and four hydrogen atoms, the enthalpy change of that reaction is 1,660 kilojoules. So the average CH bond energy must have been 415 kilojoules per mole. So that is where this definition comes from. Now, these bond energies are very useful to us because we can use them to calculate the delta H or the enthalpy change for any reaction. So this is the third way we can solve for the enthalpy change of a reaction. Now, it's important to note here that the enthalpy change of a reaction, it equals the sum of a bo the bonds broken minus the bonds formed. So when you're using heat of formations, those delta H F values, is the sum, it's, remember, it's products minus reactants. So when you're using delta H F values, it is products minus reactants. If you're using bond energy values, it's the reverse. It's reactants minus products. Now to do these, to do these problems, first thing you need to do is draw out all Lewis structures. Make sure you're following the five steps to make sure they are correct. Then add up all the energies of the bonds broken from the reactants add up all the energies of the bonds formed from the products, and then do reactants minus products. So make sure you keep this straight. This is going to trip people up on the exam. When you use delta HF values, that was from section 9.3, it is products minus reactants. When you use bond energies, it is reactants minus products. It's the reverse. Okay, let's take a look at an example. Calculating delta H from bond energies. So we're gonna look at HCl formation. So we wanna calculate the delta H of this reaction. So we wanna draw out the Lewis structure. So this one's pretty easy. It's just hydrogen, hydrogen, single bonded, chlorine, chlorine, single bonded, and hydrogen, chlorine, single bonded. So delta H equals the bonds broken minus the bonds formed. So this would be the bond energy of this HH bond plus the bond energy of the ClCl bond minus two, so that you still need to carry the coefficients, two times the bond energy of the HCl bonds. So you look up these values from the table, or in your problems, you'll be given this information in the table. Now make sure you're paying attention here and you choose carefully because there will be single, double, and triple bonds all present. Make sure you know which type of bond that you have. Here we have all single bonds. So the HH bond is 436, the ClCl bond is 243, and the HCl bond is 432. So 436 plus 243 minus two times 432, and this gives a delta H of negative 185 kilojoules. So this reaction has an enthalpy change of negative 185 kilojoules. Let's look at one more example. Here we're looking at methanol formation. So we need to first draw the Lewis structure. So when you do this, carbon monoxide is carbon to oxygen with a triple bond in between them. We've got two H2 molecules, so two H to H's. And then here with methanol, this is what the Lewis structure of methanol looks like. We've got three carbon to hydrogen bonds, one carbon to oxygen bond, and one oxygen to hydrogen bond. So delta H equals the bonds broken minus the bonds formed. So for the bonds broken, this is one carbon to oxygen triple bond plus two hydrogen to hydrogen single bonds minus, and then the sum of the bonds formed, three carbon to hydrogen bonds one carbon to oxygen single bond and one oxygen to hydrogen bond. So you would look up these values from the table or again, you would be given them in a table. 
So 1080, this bond has a bond energy of 1080 kilojoules. Two times 436, and then these are summed, minus three times 415, plus 350, plus 464. And you get negative 107 kilojoules. So this reaction has a delta H of negative 107 kilojoules. All right, let's have you try a question. And I do wanna note this one is a little different. This is a little bit of a twist. Here, you need to calculate the bond energy of the OF bond using the standard enthalpy of reaction and the bond energy data provided. So here, you are told what the delta H for this reaction is. You need to find the bond energy of the OF bond. So draw the Lewis structures, set up the equation just like we did on the previous slide. But here, instead of solving for delta H, you are solving for the OF2 or the OF bond energy. All right, the correct answer here is A, 188 kilojoules. So your equation, it should have looked like negative 3, 18 kilojoules is equal to, and then you would have two OF bonds plus two OH bonds minus, you've got one oxygen-oxygen double bond plus two sorry, one hydrogen to fluorine single bond. And I know that, uh, I'm sorry, this handwriting is not the easiest to read working with the touch screen here and I ran out of space a little bit. But this is how your equation generally should have looked. Negative 18 kilojoules equals, and then we've got the sum of the bonds broken. So two oxygen to fluorine bonds plus two oxygen to hydrogen bonds minus one oxygen to oxygen double bond plus two hydrogen to fluorine single bonds. And then you just solve, this is the unknown that you're solving for, and you should have gotten A, 188 kilojoules. All right, that concludes this section. Pretty short, short section, so I just have one practice problem for you to try. So calculate the approximate enthalpy change for this reaction using the bond energies given below. And once you have paused the video and given this problem an attempt, here is the answer, negative 5,826 kilojoules per mole. Okay, that concludes section nine. So you may have watched chapter eight first, or you may have watched this one first. Either way, this is the end of the material for this, uh, for our course. So that is it. You have reached the end if you are watching these in chronological order, or you may still have chapter eight to do. But either way, as always, if you have any questions, please reach out to me over email. Do not hesitate to ask.